Hello and welcome to Tutorial CU. My name is Yannick and in this video we will take a look on how you can publish an Android app at the Google Play Store. And before we start, we would like to introduce the sponsor of this video, which is Apodeal. Apodeal started as an ad mediation tool, but in recent years it has evolved into a full growth platform. If you want to monetize your first mobile apps or you want to scale your business, then definitely check this out. You only have to integrate the Apodeal SDK and you will get a fully automated monetization that will connect your app with over 70 ad networks. This way you can focus on developing and rely on Apodeal to monetize your apps and games. And if you like to stay in control, Apodeal allows you to manage ad waterfalls, segment your users, create A-B split tests, create cross promotions and you can even build personalized reports of all your metrics and find out new opportunities to grow your games. Also you can have accelerated payouts and 24-7 technical support. And you can even get paid in bitcoins and crypto. Apodeal are pioneers with in-app bidding, but there's more. With Apodeal you can also get automated forecasts of your returns. This will help you to know which campaigns generate more revenue and stop ads that make you lose money. And they recently opened a new round of applications for their accelerator. It works like a publishing company, but you can keep your intellectual property and they will help you launch your game and give you money to soft launch your apps. So if you want to make money with your apps and games that you are learning to develop here at TutorialCU, we recommend you Apodeal. Make sure to check out Apodeal's link in the description below because you are interested in earning more money with your apps and games. And now let's get started with publishing an application into the Google Play Store. So the very first thing that we need is we need a Google account for sure and we need to extend that account into a developer account. First of all I want to mention that this costs like $25 fee and you will need a credit card. And then you can visit play.google.com, you can find the link to the sign up page in the description below and then you can log in and activate two step verification. And afterwards you will get to that screen right here where you can create a developer account or you can link it with your existing Google account. You can choose for yourself or organization and then you simply pick for yourself and then you fill in all the information here. So this is really pretty straightforward, just some contact information and accepting some terms. And finally you can see it right here, you have to pay a one-time fee of $25 by using a credit card. So I have another account so I will not do it with this one right now but I will switch and then we can really continue on how you can publish something in the Play Store. Now the next step is to go to play.google.com which is the Google Play Console and inside of the Google Play Console you can manage your applications for the Google Play Store. So let's log in right here. After you have logged in with your Google Developer account, you will get to this page right here. You can see a list of all your applications, but right now you may have not created any, so your list would be empty. Let's create a new app right now. On the top right corner, click on Create App. Later in this video, I will show you how you can build your application as an AAB file directly in Android Studio that you can upload here to publish your app. Let's fill in the required information here. Now first of all, let's enter a name, Tutorials EU App. Afterwards you can select the main language of your application and declare if your application is an application like for usage, for example a calendar or to-do list or something like this, or if it's a game, right, and if it's free or paid. So let's assume we have an application, not a game, and it's free and not paid. And important to notice here is once the application is released you cannot change it. So if your application is free, you cannot change from free to paid once the application is published. Afterwards, for sure, confirm that the app meets the developer program policies. You can go through them if you like and accept the US export laws. Let's click on create app. You can now see that we are inside of our application. On the top right corner, you can see tutorial CU app. When you click on that, you get a drop down with all of your applications. And now let's scroll a little bit down. You can see here, set up your app. We got that nice overview. Let's click on view tasks and we can see that we have app access, ads, content rating, target audience, new apps, some data safety and then finally the listing, so the store page where people can find our application in the Google Play Store. Now let's click on app access. 
if your application has a registration barrier and you need some credentials for logging into your application, you should check it on right now and provide some additional information like username and password, specially just created for the Google review team. But if you have an application where you don't have any credentials, no login barrier, then you can simply go ahead with without special access. So we simply check it and click on save. At the bottom side of the screen, you can now see your changes have been saved. Now let's go back to the dashboard here on the left side. We can now see that we have step one of nine completed. Let's go to the ads section. You can now make the decision based on if your application is displaying ads right now. Our application will not display any ads. So I simply click here on no, my app does not contain any ads. And I click on save again and move back to the dashboard. As you can see, this is a pretty straightforward progress. Next, click on content rating. Let's click on start. For the content ratings, we need to provide an email address. So let's provide it here. And then check if our application is a game or a social or communication platform, something like Facebook or Twitter, for example, or another type of application. You can see some examples here, right? The news application, lifestyle app, service or whatever. So let's click on all other app types and then hit next. Now make sure to go through this. So if your application, for example, is showing some violence or some rating relevant language, and you should go with yes here, but if it's a very easy to do list application, for example, and you click on no, you can go through all of these questions that the app natively allow users to interact or exchange content with other users through voice communication, text or sharing, right now. No, our application will not do that, right? So you can really fill out all of these based on your custom application. We do not promote any online content and we do not promote any age restricted content or activities such as cigarettes, alcohol or whatever. And next up, we got some more information to provide something like, do we share the information about the physical location of the user? Can the user buy any digital goods? Is the app a web browser or a search engine? No, is the app a news or educational product, right? So, so all of these really depends on your application. Next, click on save and then click on next. And you can now see your rating. Your rating is for all ages. That's nice. Click on submit and go back to the dashboard. You can now see that we have three of nine complete. Now let's move on and click on target audience. We can set a target age and we have a range from under five to over 18. So one important key information is that if our application is targeting a group with an age below 13, then we need to provide a specific privacy policy later on. So for now, let's assume that our application is targeting a group with the age at 18 or above. So select 18 and over and click next. Now you can go through this, but this is pretty simple. So could your application unintentionally appeal to children? For most of the cases, this is simply no, but you can read it here. It's described what it in detail means. Now click on next. Then you have your summary here. And if this fits your information, then click on save. Go back to the dashboard again. And now the rest will go pretty straightforward and fast. Let's click on news app. Do we have a news app? No, we don't click on save. Go back to the dashboard. COVID-19 contact tracing and status app. No, our application, it has nothing to do with COVID-19 contact tracing or status or whatever. So click on save, go back to the dashboard. Now data safety, that one's pretty important depending on your application. So you should go through all of this a little bit more detailed. So here are some easy questions again. Does your app collect or share any required user data types? So for our application, we do not collect any user specific data at all. So we can simply go with no, and then we'll be pretty straightforward. But as you can see, and that's important, we always have to provide a privacy policy. So you can simply go ahead at your domain, for example, at your website, simply create a privacy policy. There are a lot of templates out there. And if you don't collect any data, this is really very simple, right? You can even simply say, we do not collect any data at all. That's totally fine, but you need to provide a URL. So let's go ahead and click on save draft and then go to privacy policy. Now we need to enter a URL. And there we go. So you can simply create 
a privacy policy at your domain, for example, at your website, when you use WordPress or something else, and then click on Save. Go back to the dashboard again. Again, click on Data Safety. Click on Next again. Now you can see that privacy policy here is available and here's our link that we have just entered. So click on Save again and go back to the dashboard. Now you can see that we have two more. So let's go through them, select an app category and provide contact details. Here again, we can provide some information if it's an app or a game. We can select a category, for example, art and design. We can set some tags, for example, art and design again. You can go through all of this and just check what here mostly appeals to your application. And we need to provide some store listing contact details. So we don't need any phone number or website, but we need an email address. Afterwards, scroll down, click on save. Now head back to the dashboard again, scroll down, and now let's set up our store listing. So this is really what the people will see when they visit your application page in the Google Play Store. So first of all, you should know that you can do this store listing for multiple languages. Right now we're doing it for our default language, which is English. And this one will get shared as long as we do not provide any other translations. So if we have English and someone from Spain will visit our application, he will see English too. But we can also provide Spanish information or French or every other language. So simply fill out the name, description and the full description. And afterwards, you will need to provide some graphics, which is the app icon. You can see all of the requirements right here. It has to be exactly 512 by 512 pixel. Then you have some feature graphics, a video. This one is optional, but the feature graphic is not optional. Then you scroll down and now we can place some screenshots. You can see at least we need two, two up to eight, but it's required. And for tablet, it's exactly the same, one for a seven inch tablet, one for a 10 inch tablet. And you can find all the specifications right here. So you can simply open up Photoshop, paste in some screenshots and modify them in the aspect ratio and in the resolution that you need. So yeah, uploading all of these images is definitely some work, but if you believe in your application, it will definitely pay off. So after you have completed all the information right here, click on save right now. He will complain because I don't have uploaded anything, but it's totally fine. So you can do it right now. And when you have it done, we will now get to the point where we will really upload an application file. So on the left side, let's click on testing. Ideally, you would maybe first release a test application right here for your maybe beta tester, so for closed testing or open testing or internal testing, right? So, but for now, to keep the video short, we simply go ahead and skip the testing part. It's exactly the same, but we will go for production part. So let's click on leave and discard for me, for you. You may have saved your information so that window should not pop up. But now let's create a new release that would directly get rolled out into the Google Play Store as soon as it's approved by the review team of Google. So a production release means that it's going live once it's approved. So go to the top right corner and click on create new release. And you can now see that we are prompted to upload some app bundles. And then we can paste the uh, release name right here. But this is the main information here. So here we can upload a new release. So a new version of our application. So if you click on upload, you will be able to upload your application. Now, if you have an AAB file right now, so that you have your application, go ahead and upload it. And you can simply click on release on the bottom right corner. But if you don't know how you can create an app bundle, let's do it in Android Studio right now. So here I got the latest version of Android Studio and a very, very simple application. And that's not really what it's about, right? It's just about exporting. So first of all, we need to sign our application for the Google Play Store. And to sign our application, we need to generate an upload key and a key store. If you don't have that yet, simply click on build and then generate signed bundle APK. Select Android app bundle, click on next, create a new key store path, select a path for it, for the key store in general. I will now save it on the desktop, but you for sure could save it anywhere where you like, but you maybe want to save it in your user folder. Then we provide a password give the key an alias, so a name, for example, upload, again, a new password. Then we can specify the validity in years. So 25 years is this key valid and then provide 
this information right here, which is simply some key information about you. So once everything is filled out and provided, let's click on OK. Now it's automatically selected and the key store password is saved and the alias too, right? Now click on remember passwords if you like so that you don't have to provide the passwords every time again. Now click on next. Select release right here. Click on finish. Now the Gradle build is running so let's wait for it to finish. Once the building is completed, you can see this small pop-up, you can simply click on it and then it extends automatically and then you can click on locate the application bundle and it will exactly show you where your Android app bundle is located. So this is the file that we need to upload. So let me just copy the path right here, simply click on Windows in the path right here and then you can copy it. Head over to Google again, click on upload, then provide the path and the file, click on open and you are good to go. Now once it's uploaded, you can see all your specifications right here. So the version, API level, target SDK, etc. Then you can provide a release name if you like. This is not shown to the users on Google Play, this is only for internal. And then you can provide some information and this one is shown to the users. So you can paste in some release notes right here in different languages. You can see it's written in that sort of markup. Once you're done, click on save. And then finally, if you are ready to roll out the application and submit it for review, click on review release on the bottom right corner. And for me, you will see that I'm not really done with the store listing. You can see this right here. So once I have the images and the app icon, I can fill it out and then it's fine. But there is one more thing that we need to do. And many people are searching for this. On the left side, click again on production. Now click on countries and region and add countries and regions. Then simply select all, click on add countries and regions because Google just told us when we wanted to submit for review that we have not selected any countries. So our application will be available now in every country that we have selected right here. Now click on releases overview again. You can see your release right here. Currently it's in draft. So let's continue added the release and now go ahead and submit it again as before for me it does not work but the only thing that I have to manage is the store listing but since I don't have any images I cannot really proceed here but you can simply go ahead and upload your app icon and your images and then you can simply on the bottom right corner click on review release and the Google team will go ahead and review your application this may take some days and if everything is fine, your application will be available on the Google Play Store. And if something is wrong, you will get a feedback information of what you need to adjust. So yeah, this is how you can publish an application in the Google Play Console and how you can build an AAB file directly in Android Studio to upload it to the Google Play Console as a new release of your app. If you like the video, definitely give a thumb up. And if you haven't subscribed already, go ahead and subscribe to our channel right now because you don't want to miss any of our high quality videos, right? So subscribe right now. And then see you next time. Thanks for watching.